John chapter 19 and verse 35. John chapter 19 and verse 35. Say amen if you have it already. All right. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. God, we put all of our hope in you and in your word tonight by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. This is John the Apostle, John the Gospel writer. And he is talking about the events concerning the death of Jesus or the crucifixion that he personally witnessed. He was one of the few that were there around the cross. And so he says, the man who saw it. Now the word saw there is the word in the Greek that means personally saw. Personally, I saw it with my own eyes. The man who saw it has given testimony. Given testimony. Now, that phrase, given testimony, means this. Appeared and spoken as a witness. Mm -hmm. It's a legal term. If you've ever given testimony in a court, if you've ever given uh, testimony uh, with regard to a case or uh, some kind of a situation where you had to say, you know what, I was there, I saw it, and my testimony is valid, and my testimony has weight, and it's important that I speak. That's what John's saying. Yes, Yes, sir. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony, or his certified statement, It's certifiable. If you went there, watch, if you went to the situation in which he's speaking of and asked somebody else about it, they would say, yeah, he was there. So there's certification regarding him. He's not saying, hey, I was there all by myself and I'm telling you this is what happened. No, somebody else would say, he was there, I saw him there too. And I saw what he saw. All right. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony, his certified statement, is true, or it's right. Mm -hmm. He knows, he is fully convinced that he tells, that he speaks the truth. The word truth there means this, that which is valid. It is not false. It is not an error. Mm -hmm. It is valid. It has validity. He knows that he tells the truth. Watch. And he testifies so that you also, everybody say also. The word also there means in the same way. So that you believe it the way he says it. So that your comprehension, apprehension, reception, embracing of it is the same as his. Watch, even though you weren't there. And he says this, he tells this, he speaks this. So that you also may believe or take him at his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If someone tells you something sometimes, you say, do you believe it? Yeah, I take their word for it. Amen. Now, if someone, you can't believe them, then you don't believe them. You know, some people who just straight lie. <laughs> make up stuff, fabricate, embellish, enhance, enlarge upon. I did this, they didn't do it. Right. Hello, are you hearing me? Well, I don't take those people at their word. I can't believe them for a second. I don't believe them from here to there. John said, you can believe me from here to there and there. Watch. You can believe me from here to there. Woo! You can believe me from here to heaven. Glory. That'll preach. John says, the man. Everybody say the man. Now, he shields his identity in order to focus the reader's attention on Jesus instead of himself. All throughout the Gospel of John, he says, the man, that man, this man, there was a man. Talks about, he, that's how he talks about himself. He wants the reader, the hearer, the observer to focus their attention on Jesus, not on himself.
And he says, this is my eyewitness account. Now, an eyewitness account was consider, considered more valuable than a secondhand account. You know, you can say, well, somebody told me that, this. And you go, well, they told me that somebody told them that, well, you know what, somewhere down the line it's going to break down. Somewhere it's going to become a little bit twisted, a little bit convoluted, a little bit invalid. And so it's not as believable, it's not as certifiable, it's not as trustworthy. You can't really take that one to the bank. But if the person who saw it says, hey, I was there, I saw it, you can take his word for it. He's saying, I want you to take my word for I saw this. And so John's testimony then is accurate if you read the story that he gives us, the details in the account. If you read it, especially beginning at verse 28 all the way down, you see accuracy, you'd see detail, you see form. There is a, a, an understanding of it that makes, you, uh, it makes it easy to believe. You embrace the truth of it. Because it's not twisted, it's not, it, it, it's not confusing, it's not chaotic, it's, it's very ordered. Yes, it is. You can tell that this is somebody who saw exactly what he's telling you. Amen. So his testimony then is accurate and it's detailed. Watch. So much so that his witness of it is sufficient to bring people into a conscious communion with the living Christ. What I say then, he's saying, is so true, it's so accurate, it's so detailed, it's so exact, that if I tell you, and if you believe it, if you take me at my word, what you believe about what I'm saying will bring you into relationship with Jesus. That's the truth of the gospel. Yes, sir. Why do we preach the gospel? Because the gospel has the power to save people's lives. The gospel truth is truth and it has the power to set the captive free. That's why we preach the gospel. Paul says, I preach Christ and him crucified and what risen and coming again. John's ministry then was to testify about Jesus so that people would believe in Jesus through his witness. Testify about Jesus so that people would believe in Jesus through his witness and his testimony. Now watch, because there is a dual purpose to his witness. Every time there is a witness given, every time there is a testimony spoken, it has a purpose. Especially when we deal with the idea of uh, the, the, the nature and the person and the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. So he's got a dual purpose in his testimony, in his witness. His dual purpose was, first of all, to draw people to believe. Yes, sir. That's my first item of agenda. I'm not here uh, in, in, uh, giving my testimony as a polemic or as an argument or to cause controversy or to stir something up. I'm just witnessing so that you will believe. That if you hear what I'm saying, you'll believe in Jesus. If you embrace what I'm saying, you will believe in Jesus, that He is the Christ, that He is the Son of the living God, that He is the Messiah, that He is the first and the last, that He is the eternal God, that He is from beginning to, beginning to ending, everlasting, all Almighty God, yes, sir. Amen. you will believe. We'll believe. John says, that's the reason why I'm testifying. That's the Amen. first reason why I'm testifying about it. Amen. Amen. The second purpose is to refute false teachers who would later deny the validity of the gospel. Amen. That's right. He's saying, here's the second reason I'm opening my mouth. Here's, you, ever, you ever have to stand up and say, you know, no, let me tell what happened because that person's lying. No, let me, I was there. Let me tell the truth. No, that didn't happen and you, you weren't even there. I heard people tell stories about stuff that happened to me and they weren't even there. You lie like a rug. You lie like a dead dog. Right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 
No, he's saying, I'm also, not only am I giving this witness and, and this certified evidence and testimony of what happened because I was there, and when I tell it, I want people to believe in Jesus. That's why I'm trying to draw you to Jesus. I want you to believe in Jesus. I was there. I want you to believe everything that you read and you hear that is true about Jesus. But the second reason I'm doing it is because there's liars out there. There's false teachers out there. There's people who tell you he's not the Christ, that he didn't die, that he didn't rise from the dead. They'll come up with that he wasn't born of a virgin, and these are religious folk. <laughs> Never mind the atheists who, who deny his existence. I'm talking about religious people who have no clue. But religious people who are twisted and preach the doctrine of demons. See, John was anticipating that at some point, he didn't know it at that, ju- at that juncture in his life, but he was anticipating by the Holy Ghost that at some point, the Jehovah's Witness would show up and preach to Jesus that isn't Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's right. Come on, come on preach it, that's right. Tell and twist the scripture to say, in the beginning was a God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's true. And tell you that Jesus was the spirit, was the spirit, uh, excuse me, was the, uh, the archangel Michael. Before he came into the earth. The Mormons will tell you that that Jesus was the spirit brother of Lucifer. John knew that at some point people were going to preach a false Jesus. They were going to contort the identity of Christ. They were going to tell you that Jesus wasn't who he was. They were going to uh, uh, undeify him. Misrepresent him. And other people would believe it. So John says, I've got two reasons for doing this. One is to draw people to Christ. And the other is to make sure that false teachers don't refute what I'm saying. This is the real deal. Now, that being said, that being true, that being established, and that being the fact then... Every believer, say every believer. believer. Look at somebody telling me, he's talking about you. Yeah, that felt good, huh? Now now, now do this, he's talking about me. Yeah. If John's testimony was reliable, if John's testimony was accurate, if John's testimony was certifiable, if John's testimony had the ability or the power or the potential to draw people to Jesus, then every single believer, say every believer, believer. uh, must have a reliable and accurate witness concerning the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It means you. And you, and you, and you, and you. Go ahead, point to somebody again. Feels good. Go ahead. Now say, I must have a reliable and accurate witness concerning the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? John had a purpose. So do you. So that, everybody say, so that. What you give in your testimony, what you speak, what you proclaim, what you give evidence of, what you give certifiable witness to, what you speak about has the potential in it to bring others to faith in Christ. If your ability or your accuracy does not measure up to the point where what you say about Jesus has the potential to bring people to Jesus, then you need to examine some things about what you say, what you believe, and how you understand who Jesus is. If someone says, well, well, who's Jesus? You go, well, uh, he lived a long time ago. <laughs> Wore sandals. Did a few miracles. It's about all. It's about all I know. It's about it. Guess what? That will bring nobody to Jesus. 
you must be able to say, He is the Son of the living God. He is the Savior of the world. And not only is the Savior of the world, but He saved me. He delivered me. I was on my way to hell, and He pulled me out. I was on my way to an eternal destiny without God, but He brought me into relationship and fellowship with God. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living. He is the anointed of God. He is the Messiah. You need to be able to tell a Jew, He is the Messiah, and here's why. Because Isaiah 42 talks about the suffering servant, talks about the lamb who opened not his mouth before his shears as a sheep who is done. You need to be able to talk about the fact that Isaiah said that there would be one who would bear the sins and bear the punishment and take the pain of the whole world. And it was not his fault, but it was God's will to crush him. It was God's pleasure to crush him and cause him to suffer for you and for me. And so I believe and having believed, my life has been change that's what you need to be able to say to somebody it should be our intention then to call attention to the reality of the Christ it should be our intention to call attention to the reality of the Christ When I walk through my day, when I go through my own journey, when I move into the realms and the dimensions of my everyday existence, I should have an intention about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. What is your intention for the day? To draw attention to Jesus. See, we, we sing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you like that. I know. I, know. I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, na, 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 na. ain't no harm to stand stay by G. I forget the rest of it. Come on. Come on. You know, that's simple, little, little homie, but you know what? It's true. If I wake up with my mind on Jesus, then I got to go through my day talking about Jesus, talking to Jesus, talking with Jesus, allowing people to understand that I know Jesus, ah, God. So my intention every day should be to draw attention to Jesus Christ, whoever, wherever I go and with whoever I meet. Somewhere in the confines of my conversation with somebody, it has to be evident of the fact that I know who he is. Come on, that's right. Amen. Amen. That I am not ignorant of his identity. That I have knowledge of his reality. Yes. And that it's more than just information, it's transformation. Yes. So that John's statement becomes your statement. Amen. Come on. Every believer has the present opportunity, privilege, and responsibility to affirm, watch, what John confirmed as the gospel. Yes, sir. 
John says, I've got certifiable evidence because I was there. So I can confirm to you that what I saw is real. I can confirm to you that what I'm writing is legitimate. I can confirm to you that my witness is certifiable. It is absolutely ironclad. It is safe. You can trust it. You can believe it. And so John confirms the reality of the gospel to us. Watch this. You and I then have the responsibility and the privilege and the opportunity to affirm what he already confirmed. I can affirm that. I can say yes to that. I can agree with that. I can come into alignment with that. There's no discrepancy with what John said and with what I believe. I believe exactly what he said. Why? Why? Not only because he said it, but because it's true and now it's real for me. So I'm an affirmer of what's already been confirmed. It is a privilege. It is an opportunity. But it is also, let me say it clearly, it is also a responsibility. It is not something that you have an option over. If you are, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a series. We're going to do a series next month called Christian. Next, next month for on Sunday mornings, we're going to do a whole series just called Christian. Why are you Christian? What persuaded you to become a Christian? What's the earmark of a Christian? Why do you believe what you believe? What does it mean to believe? That Jesus is the Christ. We're going to deal with all that stuff. It's all right. It's going to be deep. deep. Sounds simple. It's going to be profound. Watch. Come on. Come on. You see, part of your responsibility then as a believer, if you are a believer, if you are a witness of who Jesus is, part of your responsibility then is to go ahead and tell somebody. That's right. Preach it. That's right. Amen. You can't keep your mouth shut. Tell it. The apostle said it this way in the book of Acts. He said, we can't help but speak about what we have seen and heard. Told you before that the Greek is this. He's on si- inside of us. and He lives on the inside. And he insists that we do. There's an inner compulsion. There is a fire shut up in your bones, or there should be, that makes you open your mouth whether you want to or not. So the pattern that John gives us to follow then in order to present Jesus to people is that of the eyewitness account. Yes. So then you're not running around saying, well, you know what? I believe what John said. So, you know, John said, <laughs> no, you're saying now I know I'm an eyewitness. Were you there? No, but I was there the night he saved me. I can take you to the time and place. Ah, God. One of the reasons I wrote my book was simply because of that. Because people needed to know my story. Because it's a powerful story. Of deliverance and redemption and salvation. I can take you to the time. I can take you to the place. I can take you to the I'm an eyewitness. I've seen him. By the spirit of God. I've seen him in my life. I've seen him show up. I've seen he's real. I can tell you he's real. He's real. He's real. I know that he's real. Thank God Almighty. The doubts are settled. The case is closed. I know that I know he's real. That example then of the eyewitness account has been and need continue. As the course of action to be taken by the church of Jesus Christ as a whole. Everybody, every born again child of God, every believer must believe and must preach and must witness that there is only one Jesus. And that every witness of him must be recognizable as the same Jesus that appears in the word. If you preach a different Jesus, Paul said you're cursed. That's what he said. What is it? No, you got to preach this Jesus. That's right. Preach it. That's right. Say 
the eternal Christ. The only Son of the living God. You have to preach this Jesus. You have to know this Jesus in order to preach this Jesus. That's why one of the most important books you'll ever read in your, in, in your Bible is the Gospel of John. Because it'll tell you who Jesus is. I'm the light of the world. I'm bread that came from heaven. I'm living water. I'm abundant life. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. See, if you let somebody else jump up and say, well, there's many roads to God. No. <laughs> no. No. And so many in the church buy that lie. And in order to be tolerant, in order to get along with everybody, in order not to, be, uh, to, 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 be, uh, to ruffle people's feathers or, or to be ostracized or to be ridiculed. Oh, well, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know Buddha's okay, and Allah is okay, and you, the devil is a liar. You better know that there is only one Jesus. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the lie. And no man, no person, no woman, no boy, no, no girl, no person in all of eternity and creation shall be able to come to the Father except through me, Jesus said. You need to be able to say that. That's right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Without fear. Amen. Without fear. That's Amen. right. Amen. 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 Without shame. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Don't let anybody. What was that, that line out of that movie? Don't, look, don't let nobody put baby in the corner. Don't let nobody put you in the corner. That's right. Amen. Tell it. Preach it. Amen. Don't let anybody shame you into the corner. That's right. You're a born-again child of the living God. Blood washed, blood bought. On your way to heaven, you are eternally safe in the hands of God. He loves you with an everlasting love. You know that he and he alone is the son of God. And only his blood was able to save you and to forgive you and to cleanse you and make you right with God. He is the only way. To, you need to be able to say that. So that the corporate witness of the church as a whole and the individual testimony of the believer stand together as a unit. The beauty is this. You can offer someone a revelation of Jesus the Christ. You. Not just John, not just Peter, That's right. not just Paul, That's right. not just Philip, Amen. not just Jude, not just the evangelists, yes, not just the pastors, right. not just the teachers, not just the TV guys, mm-hmm. you. you. Amen. What, a Amen. what a privilege, what an opportunity. And what a responsibility. Yes, sir. Stand to your feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah. All of our hope is in you. Yes, sir. And our hope comes through faith in Christ. Yes. And so we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We give you glory tonight. Hallelujah. Make each person in this room an emissary, an envoy, a delegate, and an ambassador of the truth of the gospel of Christ Jesus Hallelujah. by your spirit and for your glory. In Jesus' name, name. amen. Amen.